Hickok 45 here. What's that look like? Look like granddaddy 1911 and maybe baby or grandchild 1911? Kind of does, doesn't it? Except for the grips, they're a little different. A little rounded off there on the pocket uh, pistol. That's what I got. I got the 1903 Colt Pocket Hammerless. We've had so many requests for this. Never did really run across one, so I finally found one and purchased it myself. And uh, it's not you know, a collector's grade or anything, but it seems to work and it's pretty cool, pretty cool. So glad to be able to bring you a Colt 1903 Pocket Hammerless. All right, not to be confused with some other semi-automatics made at the time, even by Colt. This is the Pocket Hammerless because you don't see a hammer. Doesn't mean there's not a hammer, but you don't see it, right? You might see it before the day's out, okay? So yeah, we're gonna shoot that thing. It actually fires. I just wanna compare it with a 1911 because it looks like John Browning uh, might have designed both of these. And I think he did, yes, even the cartridges. So pretty cool. Let's put the 1911 over here. And again, uh, uh, 1903, a long time ago. This particular firearm, of course it was designed, you know, in 1900, 1901, 1902, whenever, whenever John Browning was hammering it out in his workshop, right? Uh, and in uh, 1903, it was completed, I guess, the prototypes at least. And this one was made in 1916, okay? So it's pretty old, this individual piece. It's a 32. He came out with this in 32 ACP. There's the cartridge. It's not very big. People might want to laugh at it, but guess what? It's a bullet, and it's nothing you want to see coming at you, okay? Our bodies were not designed to have a bullet piercing them, no matter what the size is. So the old 32, a, a classic in so many ways. So many firearms were chambered in this. You know, the PPK, you know, think of James Bond. It was just extremely, he came up with this cartridge. Uh, he needed a, he wanted a straight walled cartridge that had a small rim on it, you know, so it would feed well in this blowback, you know, situation with a box magazine. So being John Browning, he came up with one himself. Not bad, is it? So this is iconic. I mean, these things, you see these in the movies all the time. The old classic movies, uh, the Maltese Falcon, the Casablanca, whatever, you're gonna see these things pop up. Patton, I think he actually had one, but in the movies he carries one. Uh, the movie Patton, George C. Scott. Uh, and then real bad guys, real good guys carried these things. They were very popular uh, among cops, backup gun, and uh, uh, the military actually issued some of these. They were kind of parkerized, and the Colts actually brought that model back out in, in 380. Uh, so widespread use all across Europe, everywhere. You know, that cartridge, this firearm. Uh, you know, John Dillinger supposedly had one in his pocket when he was, you know, killed outside the Biograph Theater in Chicago in 1930s, 34, whatever it was. Supposedly he had one at the time. Al Capone is known to have had one in his coat pocket all the time. Uh, they found one on Willie Sutton when he was. Killed. Yeah, I mean, they're just. They're, well, think about it. Why would that be popular? back in the early 1900s. We have a wide array of carry guns now, pocket guns. I got the little LCP2 out here, just for size comparison and everything. But back then, there were not that many cool choices. And this was not bad. This is a, look how rounded it is and, and melted it is. It's like someone would design today for a carry revolver or carry pistol. You know, it's, it's what most of us like in a carry uh, revolver or, or pistol. No sharp edges, not a lot of controls to gouge or hang up on. This thing is really rounded and melded. It's just, it's just like ideal in so many ways. And uh, there you are, in you know, 1900, 1915. So pretty cool that that was available and that's why it was so popular. Well, let's go ahead and take a shot with the thing, okay? It, uh, I'm going to, I've already done that. This is the original magazine. It works okay. I think maybe it hung it hung up on the last round a time or two. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm gonna take care of that. And I found some aftermarket magazines, and so and they seem to work. So let's send send some of these big 32 ACP rounds down range. You want to? <laughs> let's see if they'll smoke pot. I wonder. Oh, I wonder if Dillinger did any of that. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. 
There's a bad spray can. Yeah, painted that target. It needed it. <laughs> well, thank you. Let's try that again. <laughs> he didn't put on quite the show. We might have another round. The, the uh, slide does not lock back. We'll see if we can smoke a little more here. All right, click. Yeah, so it's probably empty. It's not clicked when it wasn't empty yet, so we'll assume it's empty, but we'll still stay pointed down range. All right, so yeah, it works. Uh, man, this thing was made, this particular one, I looked up the serial number and everything. It's a Type 3, made 1916. And Type 3, there were more of those, I think, than any other. Uh, these were made from 1903 to about 1945. About 1908, they started making them in uh, 380 also. And uh, the, the Type 3s, there's a serial number run of them. You can look it up pretty easily. And then also the Type 3s were the ones that, let's see, what was it? They, they have the barrel, uh, integral uh, barrel lug that's part of the barrel. And they do not have a magazine disconnect. So it's one way to identify it also, other than just the serial number. So you can pull the trigger on these, on this particular one, uh, without a magazine in it. So it doesn't have the disconnect. So they came in a you know, variety of configurations. I cut my leg a little bit, so I got blood on me. And paint, red paint. We have trouble with red paint cans. I tell you, we, could, we, could, we need to do a video on paint. We are experts in paint, and it's hard to get red paint that, that works well. Uh, anyway... This is a cool little gun, uh, 32 ACP, and uh, these are made or offered by Triple K, by the way. One of you, a viewer, uh, wrote me on Facebook. I maybe posted a picture of this on Facebook when I got it months ago, and um, I don't know if I said something about it, had one magazine or, or what, but uh, one of you uh, mentioned this outfit and put me onto it, and I went there and ordered some magazines, so it's pretty cool. Uh, they, they work, and they they uh, have caliber 32 Colt on the on the base. It's kind of neat. They look just like the originals, you know, and they work. So I, I, I got several of them, okay? Because that's going to be my new carry gun, don't you think? Uh, <laughs> like I say, this is old, but they uh, they make they made uh, like 500 over 570 thousand of these things. So you know, there's a lot of them out there. It's one reason you see them in the movies. They were very popular. That's why they kept making them, right? It makes sense. Three and three quarter inch barrel. Uh, anything else on the specs in case you're looking for one for your carry gun it's a blowback action okay in most I guess most blowback action firearms when you where the barrel doesn't drop the barrel doesn't move just a blowback uh, the barrel is part of the frame now this one's a little different it locks into the frame and it doesn't move when you shoot but it uh, is not a piece of the frame it's not connected to it with a pin or welded or anything like that uh, so let me go ahead and take it apart uh, before it gets too dirty, too hot. This is just a really interesting classic gun. Let's make double sure it's unloaded because the, for me, the easiest way to take it apart is going to look dangerous. Okay, everybody see that chamber? There's nothing in it. All right, I'm going to pull the trigger, okay, whether I'm supposed to or not. So we know it's clear. <laughs> we'll triple check. Okay, uh, I have discovered now... John did it the other way. You can you can get a hold of it and get this this back where it needs to be. There's a little arrow right there and a little line. You want to line that up basically uh, right about there, and then the barrel will turn. And I might do it that way too. Okay, hey, I did it. Look, John. Uh, and then you let go, and it comes apart. I, I discovered an easier way, but uh, we'll do it this way for now. There's your spring, your, your main spring, and everything. And then the barrel, turn it back around, it'll come out. Okay, so you see you got this lockup ridges there, so it grooves that match. Imagine that in the frame. So it locks up right in those grooves, and so it's not going to move. It's like it is welded, okay, kind of like a, some of the PPK models and things. It's a part of the barrel. So that's pretty interesting. And then what you're doing is you're turning it like that so it'll move and come out. So I don't know who designed that. It's pretty clever. Oh, John Browning. Huh. Yeah. Pretty neat. And like I said, I didn't lie, there is a hammer. You see that hammer back there? There's a little hammer. It's just hidden, okay, concealed. So to put it back together, just put the barrel back in. Let's see if I remember how to do that. And uh, put the main spring back in there. And let's see, you want the barrel lug. Same thing, you want it turned up before you put it back together. 
Here's what I was going to show you. I believe we all know it's unloaded now. I'll show you what, what I discovered. If you have trouble, if you ever end up with one of these, and they actually make new ones, cold dust. What I was doing, this is a little harder because of all this leather, but I was catching it on the edge of something like that. And you can just sort of lean there and get it to the right point where the barrel will turn. It's just a lot easier for me to do it that way. There we go. We're back together. So you just, all you have to do is use your, your weight and muscle, your body, and just hold it there. And it, it's kind of like press checking, you know, and it does a great job. But you obviously, you want to double, double, triple check. I always feel a little nervous about pointing at the table and that kind of thing. Uh, some things, though, you do, and of course you see us do in, in videos, is it, part of the show, so to speak, that maybe I wouldn't do if I was just by myself shooting or at a shooting range where we're showing you things and we tend to point things in different directions just for the sake of the video, for the instruction sometimes, uh, you know. And then two, there's always exceptions uh, to, you know, to even a lot of the gun safety rules, depending on the situation, not many. Uh, but for example, uh, there might be some people who say, I would never do that. I would never point that gun at that table. Well, maybe you wouldn't, but you know, if, if I'm not smart enough to really know 100%, 120%, this gun is unloaded and can't check it three times and do something like that, if I'm not mentally stable enough to do that, I probably should not be around firearms to begin with. You know, so there's always that, that argument, just as a, as a reminder. But by and large, you can never err, always err on the side of safety, okay? Uh, what else about it here? You know, there it is, you can see the serial number. It's really easy to look up these old guns. It's just such a cool old gun. It is so concealable. And you can see why it was so popular among you know cops, officers, uh, bad guys, good guys, yeah, you know, whoever. Uh, and you can see why John Dillinger had one in his pocket, you know, because it wasn't like packing around a big old 45, you know, on his hip or whatever he was doing. And speaking of that, I wanted to show you just lined up with these others here, uh, just to give you an idea of the size of it. You saw it compared with the 1911. There's an LCP2. So it's bigger than that, isn't it? Uh, but just to give you an idea how, how it sizes up there. Okay, LCP2. And here's a shield, a couple of really common firearms. Aren't you pleased I didn't bring Glocks out for a change? <laughs> the shield's a little thicker, but you can just see, because a lot of people think a shield is just the coolest little gun, and it is. And this thing is thinner, and uh, you know, it's just, it's just so cool, <laughs> it really is. When you pick this thing up, if you've ever held one, you know what I'm talking about. It, it, is, uh, it is neat. Got your, uh, your grip uh, safety. You know, if you notice that, that's uh, you know, kind of the early grip safety. It's like a 1911 right there. Now, in my large hand, uh, I have to kind of focus on squeezing that. My neighbors are shooting over there. I think I should call a police complaint about the noise. All right, the height of irony. Let's shoot something. Now, I don't know how well I can uh, shoot this thing, but uh, we'll shoot a couple things with it. Okay, round in the chamber. You know, and it seems to function pretty well. I, I don't recall having many, I think I had a one hang up with the original magazine. I even tried some hollow points in it and they seem to work. Although I have read that they're really not good with hollow points. Uh, uh, so, you know, I mean, why would you want to maybe have hollow points anyway? I don't know, you don't have a lot of velocity. You've got a 32. Oh, did we shoot this target yet? No. Well, why don't we? We'll shoot one hand here. All right. Most of them a little off to the left. That was just me. There we go. I focused on that one. Huh. Yeah, I noticed if I put my thumb against the, the frame, I'm able to keep it more on target there. Okay. It's great to be able to shoot this old thing. Wow, 1916. That's almost 100 years old. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can hit those two liters or not. We'll try. Oh. Oh, I'm pleased. I am pleased. A pocket pistol. Let's hit the stop sign. Huh, click. I'll I can see why people like these. I would have liked it. Uh, I mean, you know, in 19, 
In fact, I remember uh, when Dillinger was shot, I remember sitting in the theater and hearing gunfire outside on the street. Didn't know what it was all about, but uh, I I'm not surprised that he was carrying one of these, really. Let's go over the hill, you want to? Why not? I mean, so what if it's a pocket pistol? Let's, uh, let's see if we can ring the gong with one. Did I put one in? Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, have I shot it over there yet? I don't recall whether I have or not. Let's try that thing, though. Uh oh. I'll be darned. I heard that. I hear that. I hear that. <laughs> oh, man. Big 32. I'm surprised they didn't knock it off the hangar. Oh, Mr. Cowboy, I'm sorry, but... Uh, there might have been some cowboys in 1903. Might have been some cowboys carrying these things, right? That's backup. Hey, that's something I haven't done. I was just thinking there while I was shooting. Let's see if it'll shoot. Uh, rapid fire. Yeah, hey, this is my new carry gun. Feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. Okay, what have I not told you about it? Aren't those grips priceless? I mean, those are original. You know, it says C-O-L-T on them and everything. You got the, the rampant Colt there. It's pretty neat. This is, uh, again, this 32 is a very, very popular round back then. It's, a, you know, in the PPKs, James Bond, it's supposedly the round that Hitler uh, shot himself in the head with and as he was biting down on a cyanide capsule, you know. And of course, a lot of this we don't know for sure. You know, in, in terms of people who carried Watt back in the day, uh, who knows how much of it's legend and how much of it happened, but it's pretty easy to believe if it's a very common, you know, pistol. And in one, especially during that time period. Now today, wow, if we, uh, if we stopped, interviewed a hundred uh, carry permit holders and say they're all carrying a pocket gun today in the hot weather or something in Tennessee, we might get a hundred different firearms. I mean, we really might. We'd probably get at least 50 different firearms if we interviewed a hundred people, if they would tell us, right? Because uh, there are so many choices, so many great choices, but not as many back then. And uh, so when good old John Browning came out with this, uh, not, bad, not bad, and he had a smaller one. Uh, what was it, a year or two later, it was uh, I think called the Vest Pocket, that kind of thing. And then he chambered the 30, two in i think this was not the very first gun it was another fn model that was first chambered i believe in uh, the 32 acp but he came up with this cartridge nifty cartridge not bad and uh in this gun i think i even have another round here somewhere with a magazine i was happy to find these magazines not that i'm gonna go out and fire you know this thing a lot i'll shoot it some john will shoot it some he really likes it and uh, he, he's wanted one of these for a long time we've talked about them and they're really not all that expensive. There were so many of them made that you can find one in just reasonable condition that's just not that, not that, it's not crazy expensive, okay? I mean, you might find this gun for like 600 bucks or something. That's not cheap, but uh, it's not like they're $2,000 because they're antiques and everything. And the cool thing is, it still works. And you can find magazines for them. How's that? That's pretty amazing. Should I push my luck a little more and try to hit the red plate? Make John Browning proud. All right. Got it. Okay. I wanted to hit it once for John Browning. <laughs> I really did. And uh, I think he'd like it if I hit. Oh, a cinder block. I'll bet it'll just mow it down. Well, he didn't mow it over. <laughs> we'll try with something else. Like maybe a slug in a little while. <laughs> so, pretty cool gun. Uh, I don't know what else to, to tell you about it. I don't really know any other lies about it. Other than it's, it's, it's definitely iconic. You'll see it in the movies if you haven't yet. And uh, a couple of negatives on the thing, I guess, would be, you know, it, you notice it has the, the heel-tight mag release. 
so I wouldn't take it to an IPSC match, you know, USPSA match and expect to do really well with it maybe because you don't have the thumb release. You got to grab it down there. And then also the safety is a little bit awkward, okay, to engage and disengage. It acts also as your slide lock. Uh, but when that safety's on, I mean, you can sort of wipe it off, uh, but yeah, it's, it's a little awkward, uh, but it works. And, uh, you know, that's the main thing. Uh, blowback action and it has a reputation for being reliable it, it really does and I, I can believe it because you know this is just a random one I picked up and it, it, it just rarely misses a lick I, I do think as I recall the only problem I've had was maybe a, around with, with the original magazine the spring might be getting a little weak on it or something and I even tried hollow points and they, they worked I don't remember what kind they were I just picked them up a random box or something and thought, well, since it's going to be my carry gun, maybe I will carry. <laughs> no, it's not going to be my carry gun. But I'll tell you what, it shoots and it seems reliable. So, you know, what more do you want? I gotta shoot one more magazine. Is that okay? And that's the cool thing about, again, as I've talked about, the, the firearms, the hobby of, uh, of firearms, uh, collecting, shooting. Uh, there aren't many other areas I can think of where you. You know, so many things are disposable or they, they only last for a couple of years or something. You know, whether it's cars or whatever, they have to be re restored. A firearm can be used moderately, even fairly extensively, and 50, 100 years later, it's still doing what it's always done and functions just fine. You know, so that is one of the cool things about this sport. And so many uh, firearms have so much history associated with them that, uh, you know, it just all ties into that. As, as you all know, if you're into firearms. So good old John Browning, what would we have done without him? So many great designs. Uh, and I mean, it really boggles the mind almost. It really does. There's almost nobody in any industry, period. It's not uh, just firearms that has de designed and come up with so many classic designs and, and solved so many different problems. Uh, like how to make a semi-automatic shotgun that works pistol, you know, machine guns, lever guns, you know, better lever gun. He, he, he essentially figured out how to make the best lever gun, the best shotgun, lever, uh, lever shotgun, right? Yeah, uh, pump shotgun, you know, uh, machine guns, you know, just right down the line. It's crazy. He even had a pretty good semi-automatic pistol that was adopted by the military. So uh, he was, he was an amazing fellow, no doubt about it. Let's shoot. Oh, I loaded two. I'm sorry. You caught me. All right. Now I'll show you the relative weakness of the 32, of course. And it's still going to penetrate, right? Well, I'll shoot the, on the tree. I'll shoot the left one. They usually go around, you know, with a 9 millimeter. See? So that's, that's your power factor. Of course, that's steel. You know, uh, it's not going to bounce off of a, a human or a zombie. Uh, let's try a plate. All right. All right I got five plates. Well, let's finish up on the cowboy. Click. Good little shooter. Good little shooter. Uh, yeah, the only, I guess the biggest negative is the cartridge. Uh, and of course it came out in 380 later. You have more recoil and I think it held one less round. And uh, so, and I was actually kind of looking for a 380 model. Couldn't find one. They're generally more expensive, harder to find. And I uh, said, so, uh, what the heck? I was like, I'm really gonna carry the thing. Uh, let me get the original in 32. And that's what I did. So. Really a neat classic. Uh, it, it's just a special, special pistol, really is. And again, it, it actually shoots and it's reliable. And you could go out and shoot the thing like we just did 100 times. You're probably not gonna have any trouble. Just a matter of how much wear you wanna put on something like this. But where it's not a museum piece, not a, not a big deal. So the 1903 pocket hammerless brung to you by John Browning originally. Uh, so pretty neat and, and again no telling what the history is on this specific firearm made in 1916 you know, it might have been carried as a backup 
by some uh, federal agents, uh, local police, uh, Al Capone, I don't know, could have been anywhere. And uh, now it's here at the compound though. Yeah, so glad we could bring it to you. Remember to support the people that support us, if you will. We love you. Life is good. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that, because I know I sure did. Well, I've got you here, I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing and you can also get an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they also do a lot of work with veterans. They accept the GI Bill. They also have hands-on experience even though it's a distance learning program. Uh, so just want to let you guys know about them. Also, you can find them at sdi.edu. Uh, that's the Sonoran Desert Institute. And also, um, just want to let you guys know we have merchandise now. So if you want to uh, buy any Hickok 45 merchandise, you can go over to our store. The link is in the description of every video. And there's also a link kind of on the header of the uh, main uh, channel page, the, the, the main YouTube channel. And so we've got that. And also, if you want to find more of our content in other places, it's everywhere. Um, you can go to full30.com. We have uh, most or all of our videos over there. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45 Facebook. Um, you can find Hickok45 on Instagram. Uh, I think it's the real Hickok45 over there. And then also on Twitter is Hickok45. And then me, the son, the and son, John Hickok. You can find me at uh, Hickok45 and son on YouTube. I also do a podcast called Gun Culture Radio, which you can find on that YouTube channel and also on iTunes. And there's also a John Hickok Facebook page, which you can find the link to on the Hickok 45 and Son channel page. There's a link over there. And uh, that's all I can think of for now. That's a lot to digest. So you're going to want to think about that for a little bit and then watch one of these other videos that's like down there or over there somewhere because um, some of these look pretty good.